Okay, so I'm Francois Ross with Carpet Datum. I work with John, worked for many years um, in that space as well. And, um, you know, this is our first of a series of sessions. So I'm glad you guys can join. Um, it's not, those are not going to be long sessions unless there's a lot more, you know, a lot, a lot of questions and dialogue and, and feel free. If you have any questions, this is an open interactive session. We wanted to share um, in this series um, what's hot with the planning analytics. Um, and there's been a lot of enhancement. Uh, they sped up the enhancement schedule in the last couple of release and we thought it'd be great to share that with our customers um, and uh, maybe help you make decisions whether or not you want to upgrade to those to this uh, latest release or even upgrade from an old legacy, a more, more legacy uh, TM1 environment to the new planning analytics if you haven't done so. Um, this first session is part of a series, like I said, and I think you got invited to uh, this one, and I, I'm pretty sure John and, and the, the Insight team will, will invite you to to the entire series. Those are the date that we targeted so far and the content. Subject to change, but uh, I think this is pretty firm uh, as far as you know the, the subject areas and topics we're going to cover all the way through uh, February. And then I wanted to also announce... Um, for those who are attending those sessions, our customers as well as, as others, uh, we're, we're going to have a series of master classes, which will be led by our consulting team um, and architect team um, on planning analytics and TM1. And those are some of the topics that we have in mind. Uh, it's still work in progress, but uh, be on the lookout for invites to those as well. Um, they will be free for our customers. And if you refer a friend, or you want to pass it on to someone that is not a customer of ours, then they can still attend $400. Um, so this is going to be great, a lot deeper dive than this deep dive. Um, and uh, I think this will be great for you guys to be able to learn and apply proven practices from our, from our consulting team. So the new release of planning analytics as a lot of hand enhancements and that's why we wanted to 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 do a series of of deep deeper dive sessions to 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 look at those um today we're going to look at more of the user experience and the and the and the, the look and feel of the welcome page and the interface which has greatly um being enhanced as well uh just a couple of topics uh you know areas that that i notice enhancement um, the welcome page is, is totally rebuilt. It's actually brandable now, uh, or, you, or you can create themes very easily. It used to be pretty hard. Now it's a lot easier uh, to enhance the look and feel to your liking. Um, there's access to Cognos Analytics if you, if you have Cognos Analytics, which only, uh, this only applies if you're on Planning Analytics Cloud and Cognos Analytics Cloud. But if you are on both, IBM would automatically create a tile uh, in your welcome page to um, allow you to quickly access Cognos. And the reason they're able to do that now, uh, I'll explain in, in the next slide. Um, simplified access to most of your assets, uh, they separated reporting from modeling, which I think is great because when you're an end user and you're not considered a quote unquote power user, you want to be able to get in and just access your report. You don't want to be into a modeling mode or even have access to the modeling button. So that's why they created those two um, those two areas. Uh, out of the box, the two areas are very uh, almost identical. But as an administrator, you can start enabling and disabling functions and features and separate your modeling books from your report and an analysis books. And that's where it starts to be interesting. There's also now a, a, a brand new um, capability called application and plans. I'm gonna we're gonna cover that in I believe the next session. Um, so you're just gonna see in our welcome page that it's available. But you know we'll we'll do a deeper dive into this. It's basically the workflow approach to and collaborative and workflow approach to to um, to to planning and you know into this this new release. Um, and there's also a section now for administration. There was one in the previous release, but there's a much broader section now. We'll also cover that uh, next year in, in one of the uh, recurring sessions. 
Finally, uh, the navigation changed to a sidebar. Remember in the current release that probably most of you are on, you navigate by clicking those tiles and folders. They're big, they're, they're in center screen. Now there's a sidebar just like Cognos uh, that allows you to navigate in the tree-like uh, experience and access um, your tools and your and your uh, you know any any uh, areas that way as well from anywhere in in the application. Now, <clears throat> a new interface always sounds scary to end users. I mean, you don't want to disrupt sometime what took a while to get them to adopt an interface. So that's why IBM added a preview new experience button so that a new user that logs in can allow, you know, can just enable it temporarily and be able to play with it and then go back to the classic uh, previous release experience if they want to. That's a great feature. Um, it's a, it's enabled by the administrator. You won't see it in my demo because I already have it on, uh, but it's a, uh, it's a great feature. You can add to your, um, to your, uh, to your welcome page interface. There's also a help that is now very context sensitive. Um, it, uh, search knowledge bases in the community and many different web page and assets. So it's a centralized point of access for a lot of help and tips and best practices and things like that. As far as the uh, one of the other uh, big area that I'll cover in my demonstration is the uh, is the is the new skin. I like to call it a new skin. Basically, uh, Planning Analytics now uses in the new release the CA the car the Cognos Analytics Carbon Skin and Theme. So a theme and and it's, it's a series of fonts, icons, interface, and parameters and and Cognos has, you know, evolved over the last couple of years into this carbon skin and theme, and PA can now use it. You can switch to another team or a more classic looking theme, but I don't think you will because it's a lot more dynamically scalable theme, meaning, you know, in the in the current release of planning analytics, it, it's it's hard sometimes to make pixel perfect dashboard. For some reason, they don't resize well. Uh, I, I, if you're if you're hot on dashboarding, it's always been frustrating to to create something that fits on a lot of resolution. Well, the carbon skin is a much more of a uh, we call it uh, you know it's a dynamic HTML and font size, and it allows you to to get lots you know a lot more creative in creating and and developing your dashboards <coughs> and visualization. Uh, most of the visualizations have been changed, and it's using also the Cognos Analytics charts and visualization. So you're going to see a major change there. Uh, most of the traditional one, like the bars and columns, look look and feel the same at first, but then you got a lot more parameters that you can use um, and to um, to enhance your visualization. And of course, there's new charts added, and there'll be new charts, I'm sure. Uh, there'll be a lot of new charts in the next micro release coming up and next the next month, and because there's you know now that they can inherit all the uh, Cognos Analytics uh, visualization, I mean I'm sure they're gonna add uh, they're gonna probably be on par with Cognos. Enhanced field population that's something we've been waiting on. Uh, just like Cognos again, I keep mentioning Cognos, but every new you can tell that all the new features have been coming from the Cognos uh, application. Um, but the field population allows you, when you have a chart, to have a separate pane for the field management. What do you want to see in that in that chart, as opposed to in the old release, you have to deal with the you know the the, the upper toolbar and change the dimensions in there, uh, and, you know, which which is more something you'd like to do in a pivot table. But in a chart, it's better to have placeholders for your fields and have uh, um, the capability to filter those. And I'll show you that in the demo. Same thing with the filtering. Um, so there's much more uh, properties and customization for your visualization. And finally, the font scaling. Uh, this is long awaited. Um, you know, in planning analytics, we didn't have a lot of control over fonts. It was a little funky. Uh, now you and, and palette, by the way. So now this is also um, you know, fully inherited from Cognos. So you have much more control over fonts of your cross tab, your tables, and your titles. Any question? Or a comment, or you guys hear me okay? All right. So let's take a look. This is uh, intention of those session is more of an interactive demo than um, 
then too many then then slide slide talk so hopefully you guys see my screen let me know if you don't you should see the entire welcome screen and the new look and branded feel um and those are the tiles i was i was talking about again if you have cognos it will show up as another tile here um and if you don't this is how it's going to look out of the box so you have your application and plans which we'll cover in the next um session you got a section just to navigate through your report and analysis books and you know your templates and, and folders you have a data modeling um section which we'll also cover later um but that's where you create custom you know in there you'll create custom templates or books that will focus more on modeling and creating TI processes and all the administrator and modeling, and sorry, the modeling features of planning analytics. And finally, since I logged in as an administrator, I have access to the admin tile, which we'll cover in another session. At the bottom, you've got your plans and application. I won't cover that yet. This can be totally branded. Finally, the, the logos can just be replaced by a local file, um, as opposed to you know a web uh, enabled, uh, image that you have to configure with a web server finally you got your recent um most recent uh, book and template that you use and finally if you have any favorites which you add with you know just click on the hard button um they will show up in here the navigation sidebar is here on the left so you see you can go more tree-like navigation by just clicking on this sidebar and expanding it and then you can navigate through your users, I'm an administrator, so I can see all the user folders here. But if you're a user, you're gonna see only your folder. So you got you got this, uh, you got two ways to navigate. This way here, right, which you can expand and collapse, or, or this way here, which if I click on it, it's opening um, the view um, of all my different, you know, you can see you don't have those big tiles anymore. I think uh, the tile were taking a lot of space and. And uh, you know this is a much uh, smoother navigation to your to your assets. You can also create something new from any screen, so you'll always see that create book or create book from a template button, but also a plus sign here, which allows you to create a book or a book from template. And if you are a modeler, you're going to see a third choice here, which will create a model, right? And that's where it's going to open up a book that is solely intended for modeling and. The way you set that up as an administrator is by, you know, creating roles and groups into your uh, into user administration, and then the menu items here you know, will sh will change based on what you what you assign them. Okay, so let's create a blank book to do the uh, vis uh, visual demo. So. We're not going to get too fancy here. I'm just going to drag and drop things in here to show those features that I was talking about. So the, the toolbar is a different icons and, you know, it kind of changed. So this is uh, your navigation of all your assets and they call them databases, right? So this is where you look at your servers that are up and running currently. Um, this is where you see your visualizations and you can see there's a, a few new ones and the icons are, are different much more like Cognos. This is where you see your uh, widgets, uh, which um, in the older release were on the upper right of your uh, interface. So again, you can URL, attachment, a uh, video, an image, it's all in here or text box. It's all available here. Um, so let's go back here and navigate into the inf infamous SmartCo um, sample application which has uh, a lot of assets so it's it's an easy one to use for for demonstration purposes and i'm going to use um this uh line item detail um cube which has a few views as well and i'm just going to use this view as a starting point and drag it on my screen in my workspace actually so i can minimize this at any time and work on that view so you see this is nothing different uh we do have relative proportional um sizing now so when you drag and drop for those who know cognos that's business as usual but for planning this is great because you it'll tell you how much percentage of the screen you are using um as a matter of fact uh, your screen uh, the, your carbon screen it's called now the workspace you can be if you can do fit to page that's a big one for planning analytics um, 
dashboards, you know, whatever resolution your users have, small laptop, uh, tablet, um, it will probably fit well into the screen now. Or you can hard code it to a, a certain size, right? And you can, and if you make relative versus absolute, relative is what you just saw there. It's always going to be a percentage of the rest of the real estate, right? As opposed to absolute, you're going to see pixels. So it's all great features for dashboard building and make the user experience a lot smoother and, and better looking, right? Um, so I have a, a chart of account here. And one of the, one of the uh, very well welcomed uh, visualization um, that, is, that, that is available now is, is, is the waterfall. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of finance folks love the waterfall chart because it shows you your, um, you know, your breakdown of, of, of uh, inbound you know, credit and debits into a visual charts. And um, it will not recommend, I'm surprised it's not recommending the water chart, by the way, that's a, that's a wish list for a Christmas gift here. But now I have to tell it that this is what I want and I'm gonna click on waterfall and you can see it's already making sense, right? Because you got your gross revenue and then your, your, uh, your negative, uh, different negative accounts. And, and, and finally you've got your sum, which, you know, I don't like to see the sum. So that's where the, the, uh, properties pane becomes handy so many properties if you remember uh, the well, <laughs> the current release of planning analytic doesn't have a lot of property but here you have control over any color of any bars for that for that chart uh, you can remove the total column easily uh, i like to transpose my waterfall that's probably a better way to look at it here you see and um I can all, I can see that I have a lot of wasted space here because my numbers none of the numbers go higher than two million, so I'm going to actually hard code a, a, a maximum access of two million. So a lot of flexibility. I'm not going to go through all that, but you see, there's a lot you can do. You can uh, you can show the values uh, on the bar. I mean, most of the features that are available in BI, you know, are not available here, and uh, you can change the the actual name, the label of each of those columns, if you want to. So it's super, super uh, flexible and, and powerful. So that's a great chart, which I'm sure you guys will use a lot. Uh, and I, I actually have a customer that says, uh, we're switching to the, we're upgrading because of the waterfall, because a lot of their users were downloading it to Excel and created their own waterfall in there. Okay. Now for every column, actually, you know what, I'll, I'll show that in the next, in the next, in the next example. Um, as far as the title, um, you can click on the chart here if I remember and let's go to general appearance, show the title and then title is here and you got complete control over font size and everything justification and IBM Plex is that carbon default font, which I recommend you, you use because it really resize well, but you can still use any font and you can upload font. That's great. Uh, we'll show that in the administration, but any font can be uploaded with a simple upload. Now it's not complicated. It's just a local file upload and you can add the new font. So next, uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, go to my charts here and select a new chart that I like. It's the, sorry, my French may prevent me from pronouncing it correctly, the Mary Mecco chart. So um, actually, yeah, there we go. That chart is great. It's, it seems complicated at first, but uh, it's a really telling chart for looking at uh, multidimensional trending and, uh, and breakdown. And um, split of, of values. So let's just resize this. Now, I wanted to talk about the placeholder. So you see here, you don't have to deal with the um, the actual toolbar that had all the dimensions. Since you just brought a, um, a visualization, you have placeholders for your bars, for your color, your length, your width, and they're all showing up here as well. So that's the field pane I was talking about. Okay, so if I go back to my data, same application. I'll pick a different cube that's more tailored for reporting. And I'm going to look at my accounts. 
actually uh, let's look at my month dimension and make those my bars so i'm gonna drag uh, i know i have a set a subset for months so i'm gonna just drag my months and replace it here and i could have replaced it right here in my field pane as well right now uh as far as my colors um actually before i put my colors let me select a version i could drag the whole version into you know, into a field and filter it later or i can just pick my member right here from my choice i'll pick my budget and drag this as my length and now i have you know data but it's 100 percent each way so the marimeco basically shows you the breakdown and the split of your values over time in this case you see the month on top but also over another dimension. And that's what I'm gonna bring now. So I've got my different company organization structure here. Uh, I'm gonna drag a, a set that I created already. And you now, now you see, once you have two fields, those placeholders are no longer, I mean, they are there, but they're very hard to, to find. So you're better off dropping in here in this drop zone. And there you go. Now, now that's a very telling chart, right? Because it's telling me, my breakdown not only over time but within a, per a period over my organization it's not the values are not very different but you can tell right you can tell the the differences and if you hover your mouse you're going to see the value so this is great uh, when i click on that i have access to filters i can change my you know from net profit to another account 2020 is one of you know just by clicking on this guy here and it's going to pull down the different members and subsets that are available. So very, very uh, BI like filtering and, you know, uh, and, and um, parameters. Um, another challenge we had with, um, with, um, sorry, let me just recite. Another challenge we had with um, the previous version was the mapping, uh, you know, the, uh, the geography mapping of your data. I can see I have territories here. So um, now you don't have to do much. I mean, in the previous release, you had to make sure the dimension has an attribute for location. There's actually uh, some knowledge base. You have to Google it first. And I never remember which, pro which attribute to change, but now you don't have to worry. If the data is mappable, it will create a chart. So you access that through the toolbar that you see on top here. So I forgot to talk about that. That's the new toolbar instead of, you know, all the, the toolbar buttons that were on top of the chart. So you access your chart right here and I can switch to uh, my map, which they call legacy map. And it's not gonna populate yet because my fields are mapped incorrectly. You see, automatically it put my month as a region. I don't want that. So I'm gonna go back into this and brag drag this over here again and now it should be okay <clears throat> so you see now i've got a i've got a map so no worry about you know going back to the administrator and say hey i want to put that on a map what what do you need to do and it's a model or feature usually now it's just pure bi just drag any location in there and you're good to go so um you can change to the, the tip you know a lot of those users they want to see exploration so now if you go to exploration mode now you're back to the, you know, you're back into the classic, you see the classic toolbar um, that we're all used to, which you can swap dimensions if you want to. So don't worry, it's not always BI like interface. You can go back to the toolbar that we had where the sandbox are available, you know, um, same, same, uh, you know, see the sandbox menu is here. So that's the same toolbar that we had upper at the, uh, at the top of, a, of any exploration. So that's pretty much it. We want to make sure that each session kind of rolls into the next one, and and uh, we don't want to just throw the kitchen sink at you in one session. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, you know, next session we're going to deep dive into the plans and 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 more features there, uh, and show you how you can create uh, some really nice looking dashboards. As a matter of fact, uh, before I do that, let me. Um, let me show you an example of what I believe is a nice looking dashboard using some of those new features. Uh, I think it's called dashboard. Whoops. Um, 
Let me navigate in there. It's in here. Do right here. There's a nice, I'll be using that in the next demo, but um, you know, with creativity and bitmaps and nice background images, uh, you can create some really nice looking dashboards now, a lot easier than with the previous release where, you know, I mean, you had to be a lot more creative and in, into, um, into font size and colors and scheme and palette and all that to create some nice looking dashboards. So that kind of wraps it up. Any question, comments, feedback, or suggestions on things you'd like to see next that we haven't uh, presented yet? Well, thank you, Francois. That was great, great overview, and I <clears throat> appreciate everyone taking time. If you have any questions uh, after you hang up, feel free to reach out, send us an email, or give us a phone call, and we'll do our best to answer that. So have a great rest of your week, and we'll hopefully see you all in uh, uh, our next session in two weeks. Thank, Thank you. you all. Bye-bye.